All right, the Audible's on the air. It's a Wednesday afternoon. We've got a full house here inside the All bubble. Right. John Congemi with me. A.J. Dewey, former teammate. What's up, Good Jay? to be with you guys, Good man. friend yeah, for a long, long, long haven't, time. Haven't seen you in a while. Haven't I been know. on the show back here. Got hope, it's, hope I remember the program. It, it's, <laughs> senior, it's senior bowl time, and, and I thought it would be a good time to bring A.J. in and, and talk about that. Got a lot of stuff going on in the senior bowl. Really got underway yesterday, John. The guys came in uh, early in the week Monday, uh, went through all the, 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 the physical stuff, the measurements and all that stuff. Uh, and, and yesterday, really, I think was the first day where they got out That's and, right. and got to work on the practice field. And uh, Baker Mayfield came a little late because he had a little family situation. I guess the situation with Baker, his mother's sick. Right. He may be leaving at any moment if things turn worse uh, for her. But but as it is right now, he's there. Uh, he's, he's with the Vance Joseph uh, crew that's coaching right. the Denver Bronco team that's coaching, I don't know, the North, uh, the North team practice. Uh, and also Josh Allen, the kid from uh, Wyoming. from Wyoming, is there. So, um uh, there's a lot of good stuff going on. And AJ, I think you, you and I are, and John are all kind of in that same boat. I love watching this stuff. I know you said you were watching some of it on, uh, on Sports Center Network, where you saw no, our NFL, NFL Network. A little bit of it. I saw some it, interviews uh, uh, by Mayak, Mike Mayak. I think he's, yeah. uh, he's, you know, he's world class at what he does. I, yeah. I really appreciate uh, and, uh, and like his information that he puts yeah. out to fans. You know, the thing about Mike Mayak, and we've run into him uh, along the way, traveling around, and he may be doing a game or something. and. Uh, I guess we used to do Thursday games, whenever, and and so I, I've had an opportunity a couple times to to meet, usually in the hotel bar, you know, kind of sitting there having a couple cocktails Bruce, and, yes. and talking. And, and Joe knows him real well because he doesn't has him on the show. But it, it always it's always funny about guys like him, uh, and and who's the ESPN's guy? Um, he's been doing it forever. Guy with the hair. Oh, I don't know. The, the Mel, Mel Kiper. Oh, oh yeah. for the draft. The draft guy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. the draft guy. I'm sorry. Mel Wait Kiper. a minute. That could be the first time that Leon. <laughs> Actually gave, gave yelled real, something that, that was, made was, sense. Was, it was right. That was, was right. That right. was bang on. But but both of those guys to me, you know when you you know when you run into a guy and you know he knows what he, his stuff. Right. You don't have any notes. Say hey, how about that guy? And he just starts he spewing, starts out, spewing stuff. out names, spewing and information. Out. Well, you know, was, you know that that arm's a little weak. You know, he's good from ten to twelve yards. <laughs> when you get him to that fourteen that percentage yards, goes he can't here. throw that. But you yeah. know, and it's just coming off the top of his head. Well, he comes up with Ma- 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 is that? Got a, you know, he's got he's got good bend in the hips. You know, he's got. <laughs> Uh, he's got the good arm under with the rotation and everything. I mean, he he just comes up with all these football terminologies that you, the three of us, kind of mm-hmm. know. And, and, right. and a lot of those, and a lot of those guys have made up terminology that has become has become part of the vernacular. That is. You know, I discipline. You know, right. all these different kinds of Sitting things. Sitting the edge, <laughs> yeah. uh, climbing the pocket. You know, doing all these. things. Yeah. You got to get him off his spot. Yeah. You know, you get a lot of those. So, John, so John, as we kind of get going in the Senior Bowl stuff. Um, any guys so far in, in yesterday's practice kind of jump out or anybody you're looking at with the – and not, not – you know, obviously we're looking at, at potential guys that, that may end up being somebody right. that's on the Dolphins' wish right. list or just guys out there that are, that are trying to improve their, improve their lot as far as the NFL – upcoming you know, NFL draft. Guys, when you talk about the North, and that's where the Denver staff yeah. is, and obviously John Elway made sure – that when this was organized, he was going to get the two quarterbacks. Did I see John Elway playing in a PGA tournament this uh, this last weekend? You might have. I think so. Out west? Out west at yeah. uh, Palm Springs. Yeah, that's right. He was playing with uh, John Rahm, I think he was playing with. I saw. And that's who won, ended up winning the tournament. Ended up winning the tournament, yeah. But anyway, the, I, 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 I digress. I, it's okay. He's a one handicap, Jay, just yeah. in case we're, we're trying to check rules and regulations. <laughs> Elway's a one. So they may make him a plus one plus in the tournament. One for or he's, Jay. he's running the show. <laughs> <laughs> Dock him a club or two. <laughs> so the North had the quarterbacks, right? So you go back and look at Baker Mayfield. He, he measures out at six yeah. foot. I don't think height is going to be a problem because it wasn't a problem uh, when you are able to move like right. he can move and the ball comes out on time. It, it could be an adjustment going from under center yeah. and dropping back, but there's a lot of times that in the NFL you're in shotgun yeah. anyway, so you're going to be able to find lanes to throw the football. But the other guy was Josh Allen, and, and the one thing that, that jumped off the screen when you saw him was the velocity yeah. of his throws and the way it came out of his hand. Uh, I think that's a, that's a different type of cat yeah. throwing the football. Now, is he as polished? Has he faced a lot of different defenses right. that – uh, in big games that were specifically designed to stop him, not really, yeah. because he probably got away with a little bit more raw ability playing the, the teams that he played in the, the conferences that he was playing against. But you have to give him in that setting and see how he reacts, yeah. see how he reacts to learning new systems, new and le- learning the, uh, the verbiage yeah. coming from the quarterbacks and coming from the, the uh, sidelines. You know, no, no boards with – you know, pictures yeah, of Madonna right. on it or yeah. whoever's going to well, be on the sideline. Well, he's going to see the speed of the game 
increased to this I mean, week. Or, yeah, this yeah. week. So he's going to get his first taste of like everybody lines up that can play at a different level. And more so for him because he played it at a lower level. You know, he's still a Division One guy, but, right. you know, Wyoming. And, and I, that, I think, is what every, the intrigue with everybody about Josh Allen. Look, you played at this level. We want to see if you can perform the same way at the next the next right. step up and this you know going into the pros is another step up but this is a this is a uh, this is certainly a step up in the competition yeah, for, him for him to see to see how he can well, go it's the and, best of the best yes. you know you're going to look out and you're going to recognize yeah. the logos on somebody's helmet yeah. you know when you look around you go I remember that guy I remember yeah. watching him play right. yeah. you know he was at LSU he was at Ole Miss he was at Alabama he was at Georgia he was you know somewhere else where yeah. you go I wish I had that opportunity but now I do yeah. and now let's see how you go I'll tell you the other thing Jay you know, Jay played you played AJ played in the Senior Bowl. I MVP. played in the Senior Bowl. MVP of the Senior Bowl. But interesting, Joe. You, you, you AJ. You played. Um, you played under under the uh, the, 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 the the Dolphin Dolph, staff Dolph, with yep, uh, yep. That with Don Shula. Well, that was a good. And, you know, that was a good. Uh, you know, uh, review for me to to be in front of an organization that eventually drafted me. Yeah. Right? How did so so so? There's a situation where you've got Denver, who's in dire need of a quarterback. They've got Josh Allen. They got Baker Mayfield. I don't know who else is in there in their stable there in quarterbacks. But anyway, they've got the two um, quarterbacks that are that are probably going to be top ten guys, uh, if not Falk, top five against Washington de- de- State. Yeah, depending on, on how yep. far. Um, what, what was it what was it about you when, when you went and had those, them for your coaching staff? You, you didn't know you were going to be drafted by them, but eventually they did draft you. How much right. do you think being there at the Senior Bowl helped you become a member of the Miami Dolphins because they were the staff that coached you well, there? I think it had a lot to do with it because, you know, I went there kind of with uh, the attitude that this is my chance to have a breakout yep. week. Uh, I, I, you know, I was on time for all my meetings. I worked hard at every every snap in practice. Uh, sometimes the offensive linemen were, you know, this is a you know, practice, you know yeah. what I mean, you know? But, you know, I was out there to prove a point. Uh, I remember one time uh, one of the guys, uh, we were putting the, the kickoff team out on the field, and, uh, like, R2 was missing, you know, and Coach Hula was yelling, we need R2, R2, and I just kind of go, I'll go be R2. Right, right. And I just went and covered the kickoff. Right. That kind of like probably, you know, I wouldn't even, he, I wouldn't even have a backup. Right. You know, I mean, I just, Look, I'm, I'm just volunteer. I'm, I just volunteer. I'm sure that's something, something that certainly caught their attention right, right. and stuck in the back of their heads, right? So, yeah, that and just, you know, just, in, in, like I said, just giving them, uh, you know, giving them, Seven days of yeah. hard work. I mean, yeah. I think I think they documented. You know, all the guys, bomb hire was on that draft yeah. class, and yeah. Bob and I. You know, being competitive against each other, being from the SEC, Alabama, LSU, we were competing against each other. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like you know to show you know who's the best defensive right. lineman out here this yeah. week. Right. You know, so so that that kind of added a little bit of a, a little mix that kind of helped the two of us stock rise because we were competing you know internally against each other. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I'll give you another angle of it. So I came. I came the other route. I came from San Jose State, you know, I, I, which probably is pretty much on an equivalent level of Wyoming right now, maybe, right. maybe in that ballpark, right. and, and was back then at the same thing. And the one thing I ran into, the one thing I had to overcome, and really throughout my whole career, it w- was, you know, I saw coaching. I, had, I, I learned stuff in that week I had never even heard about. Right. You know, the, the coaching, look, not, not that the coaching is bad, but the coaching at the lower levels isn't the the coaching I got at San Jose State wasn't the coaching you got at LSU? LSU okay. You know, the film study that I learned at San Jose State was non-existent, whereas I'm sure you guys knew about film study right. coming out from you know so 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 you coming from you know it's not only it's not only the competition you're playing against, but it's also the coaching yeah. and the in the background that right. you have and the, and the knowledge and the skill you have coming up. You you've got to find. Well, you've another, got to find your level key, there. Another yeah. key thing, Bo, I think that, you know, helped, you know, like like Bob and I coming out of the SEC was that facilities. I mean, you know, yeah. at LSU, you know, we had world-class yeah. training facilities. You know, we had we had Olympic coaches coaching us to do running drills. Mm-hmm. I mean, so so we – even in the off-season, we had the ability to be – at a different level, yeah. So that 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 that's that's another important. See, at San Jose State, we had a coach that when the co- when the when the scouts <laughs> came to, to to time us, he'd say, "I'll get him at the start." You get the start, he goes, "Take about a half step extra." <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. The line's not the line. Yeah, kid. Line's not the line. <laughs> put your feet on, put your feet on the line. You know, it was one of those one of those kind of things. You started on the line. Hey, hey, kid, don't worry. I read a guy goes, him. "Hey, I ran a four five. <laughs> so yeah, I only run thirty nine and a half yards. <laughs> don't worry, I gave him our stopwatch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's uh, it, but it's it's, it's there, and, and that I think is is for the kid uh, Josh Allen, right? Climbing that ladder, trying to you know, and, and showing those guys that hey, because I, I know when I went when I went to the senior bowl, I played linebacker, defensive end, and tight end. 
Uh, there were three different. I was gonna get drafted one of those things. And I remember, I remember they stuck me to the tight end. I didn't. Even, the terminology was like, I'm like, whoa. Just tell me First where of all, to I've go. never been an offensive. You know, I was in right. junior college. I played a little tight end, but, and so the terminology was like just swimming in my head, and I had no idea what the hell was going on. Lex Rex, I go well, with you. Know. Uh, well, first thing. Uh, this this kid from Wyoming, Carson Wentz, you know, yep. came out of what? But North, that helps. North, 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 North State, yeah, exactly. State, I mean, yeah. you know, like when this kid was coming through, and you know, all of a sudden, as you're leading up to the draft, you know, there's they're they're targeting him now. Is they picked him in the top, yep. you know, eight or so right. at, at first. I'm kind of going, Who, I mean, Wentz? let me start. Yeah, Wentz. Yeah. I'm kind of let me start doing a little research on this yeah. guy. You know, this guy, you know, this guy's the real deal. You real, know? real. And I, I tell you the thing about we we were we were in, in Philadelphia early in the season. Uh, went up and, and the Dolphins practiced against them for three days and then played a preseason game. So every day after practice, I would go and listen to Carson Wentz, you know, his, his press conference. And I tell you what, you know about impressed. This kid was a smart kid, yeah, yeah. football IQ off the chart. You know, he, he's a you know, Christian kid and he right. wears, on, wears on his sleeve and just nice to everybody, polite, speaks well. He had the whole package and he can sling play. it. And he can sling it. Yeah. So, I think you know. I, I think if you're if you're in the league and you're looking for a quarterback and he's a guy, I think Carson Wentz is the guy you measure okay. him right. against. And, that, and we you talked know? about this before the show with Mason Rudolph, who yeah. was hurt, had the boot on it. Oklahoma State. He talked like he was in the meetings all day. Right. You know, he had the terminology, he had the confidence, he had uh, the desire. It felt yeah. like to do well. And want, can't wait to get back healthy so he can show his proofs. Yeah. You know, not only from his film. But in the combine, in his, in his pro day workout. So there's a lot of those guys. You, you yeah. mentioned terminology. A lot of these quarterbacks, I think that's going to be the toughest thing mm -hmm. for them this week. Not learning the plays, but being able to listen to yeah. it in their ear and then regurgitate that in the huddle yeah. to the players. Because Mike White was one of those guys. They're all playing that high octane, high right. tempo, you know, uh, no huddle offense. Yeah. So they're getting in the line. They're looking at the sidelines, and they have a play within three seconds yeah. because ten coaches are telling eleven guys what to do. Yeah. So yesterday it was great because Bill O'Brien's given a play to Mike White, who went to USF, transferred to Western Kentucky. So now he's in the game at the Senior Bowl. He said, you know, hey, let's go. I write uh, Ziggy, one twenty six Lex X corner Y shake or whatever it was, right? So he's walking from Bill. He walks over, then he walks back and goes, can you give me that one more time? And, he, and, yeah. he, and, and Bill's kind of well, laughing. Well, he's giving him the play again, but he had to do it, you know, maybe three well, times. Well, that, that's the other thing, too, John. When I, when I look at terminology now in, in this league, um, you know, you know, Joe, Jay, you remember, like, running play, toss 20, toss, you know, toss 28, 28, 28, yeah. you know, 38 or 34 right. straight, right. you know, yeah. P10, uh, 37 yeah. trap, 38 right. trap, whatever it was. Short option. Now, now, right. now I listen to terminology, and it, it's like it's two paragraph. I mean, it's right. two pay. It's two. It's two sentences. You yeah. know, and everything's a, a, there's a no state very or few a, numbers. Yeah. You know, it's all it's a, it's a word. Uh, Minnesota, you know, uh, uh, Minneapolis cluster, is a, yeah. Minneapolis, Omaha, you know. Zone, Texas. you know, like, whoa! How, how do you remember all yeah. this stuff? You know, just, I'm gonna, uh, you know, you, you guys are on quarterbacks, but I'm gonna miss. You know, I'm gonna miss uh, this. This coming up to the draft is gonna be the John Gruden quarterback. Uh, yeah, that, that was really that was good. Always good. I, I yeah. used to love that. That was really good. Always, good. Yeah. always good. Hey, before we go on, I gotta uh, get to something here. This was just announced uh, yesterday. NFL uh, builds on its commitment to social justice with the debut of a new campaign. Announced uh, announcement of player owner a player owner committee. Um, Let's Listen Together initiative will highlight ongoing engagement efforts among players, owners, law enforcement, and civic or organizations to uh, improve communities. I think it's just an opportunity for NFL players, coaches, and everything to, to, you know, to integrate with, you know, with, with people that are, that are, quite frankly, protecting us uh, around our cities. As part of the ongoing work to support the players, the NFL today announced a joint player and ownership commitment focused on social justice, a campaign, Let's Listen Together, Launches today, it includes a multi-layered rollout, including digital content, brand spots highlighting the player-led work on social, uh, social and uh, racial equity. The platform will also include social media support as well as individual letters from players and owners sharing their stories and personal reasons for making social justice a priority. The working group committee includes Cardinals owner Mal uh, Michael Bidwell, Falcon owner Arthur Blank, Cleveland owner Jimmy Haslam, Jag owner Shahid Khan, uh, Steven Ross, the Miami Dolphins owner, New York Jets uh, offensive tackle Kelvin Beecham, NFL legend Anquan Bolden, Josh McCown, uh, Jets quarterback, uh, cornerback Josh Norman from the Redskins, and Elias Williams, uh, NFL legend. So there's a number of people 
that are involved in this. The NFL Foundation is also launching a new grant to, uh, for active and retired players. That's you and I, Jay, retired, not active, <laughs> who develop social justice programming or partner uh, with nonprofit organization commitment to this work. Similar grant will be open for club foundations later this month. And I mentioned uh, uh, Stephen Ross involved. He, this is what he had to say. I felt, I felt it is important to continue to advocate for the issues that are important to our players, specifically social justice. I know what our players have done in the community on a year-round basis, and there is nothing more American than what we are, adv are advocating for, equal rights and justice for all. With our, con with our continued efforts through RISE and the, found and the funding to individuals and organizations that further, principles, that further the principles of community engagement, education, and justice reform, our vision is to use the unifying power of sports to bring people together. That from Stephen Ross. Ross, you know, is the, uh, is the founder of the Ross Initiative uh, in Sports uh, for Equity, or, or the RISE program, uh, that really has been out now for, for a couple of years. So, Jay, it's nice to see that the, the league uh, and, and everyone else, with everything that's going on, continues to reach out to the community and do the right thing. And I think the Dolphins this year, and i, I got to give Michael Thomas and, and Kenny Stills a, a lot of credit. They're two of the guys that chose to, you know, to, to demonstrate the way they wanted to demonstrate at the National Anthem. But in the meantime, away from the game uh, during the week, they would go out on, on rides with the police. They would interact with people in the inner kids in the inner city saying, hey, you know, when you, once you get to know the police, you're real, you know, to reach out and try to bridge that gap between the you know the the inequities in the inner city uh, with what's with what's going on now and so I think it's a I think it's a nice situation and uh, it's certainly nice for the NFL and, and, and Miami Dolphins uh, driven by uh, Stephen Ross always in the forefront of that type of thing AJ well I mean I I, I, I kind of get uh, how players you know have a position and they they want to do what's right for the community do do what's right for just people social justices uh, I, I think that I hope next year that the, the kneeling of the national anthem is yep. kind of is, Done with. Is, is put to bed, um, and, and guys can kind of go forward with these programs. Well, that the ownership. president would keep his mouth shut every the, now and then. It would have that would happen. Yeah, but I mean he, he does that. he does talk out of two sides of his mouth, yeah. and both of them are wrong most of the time. But you know, I mean, <laughs> he do, he's doing a lot of good things for our country. But let's not get into politics. Yeah. So, yeah. but uh, you know, I, I just I, I just think that you know players you know they believe in certain things. I believe in certain things as an alum, as a fan, as yeah. just a parent. So we just got to you know do what's right for our country and. Uh, and just try and keep football and, and politics uh, away from each other. All right, let's go ahead and get some of these questions. Periscope from uh, I got game, game, I got game. NJ from New Jersey. There you go. Bo John and AJ. When was the last time the Dolphins played in the AFC Championship game? Uh, they played against the Buffalo Bills. I think Thurman Thomas just caught another screen pass in the <laughs> game, and that was uh, I'm not sure when that was. That had to be. Leon, can you can you my, get my crack research staff of Leon in there? We'll be off the air in about 15 minutes, so you might not get that information by then. It probably had to be in uh, oh, like the late, 90. Yeah, I was going to say 96. Yeah, 90, no, that well, long. Thurman Thomas was there. Uh, that had to be 96. 95, 96. 95, 96. 96. That's, yeah. what, that's what I'm guessing. But I, I thought Far the last AFC championship game might have been when they lost to uh, the Patriots, when the, when, the, you know, when the Patriots went on to, to beat to, the, the Bears. To lose to the I mean, Bears. To no, the that Bears. was us. Yeah. That was right. us in 80. But that was, that was Dan, us in Danny '85. Was that was the AFC Championship game. Yeah, right. And, and I, I just thought, I just one. thought that they uh, they had lost. I know they somewhere. lost to the, no, they lost to the Bills. They, they in lost playoffs. to the Bills yeah. in that 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 run where the Bills had gone to four straight Super Bowls. So it was somewhere in that run. As I said, our crack staff will have that for us, uh, in, 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 in sometime by Friday. Uh, Periscope at <laughs> at fanatic. Uh, would it be a good move for the Dolphins to move up in the draft to pick Josh Allen? Uh, they may not have to. Uh, they may not have to. Uh, Look, this game is going to go a long way for Josh Allen. I think this and this may be even more so than than the combine because look, I think from I think from him standing out there by himself, flinging the football around, I think you're going to be impressed by him because yes. he has that strong arm. He's a big guy. He's got everything going for you like that. But I think this is more important. You talked about it. You know his his ability to understand terminology, his ability to to get a team out there and. And, and you know and, and, and do what they're supposed to do uh, and understand and, and make changes so I think this is probably uh, a, a big week for him to see whether he's going to be a guy that ends up 15 in the draft or, or as high as number five in the draft and it's something to be said and I don't know if you guys feel this way too but for a quarterback especially in a game setting in a practice setting this week there's something about tapping a guy and hey let's go yeah you ready to go get in the huddle let's yeah. go I got something for yeah, you yeah stay live and a, and a defensive guy looking over at, at a completion and going, you know what, I respect that guy. Yeah. That guy stepped in and slummed that thing, you know. That went right by my head. I, I thought I had it. 
and I didn't. Yeah. And you may talk to him as special teams are going on and say, hey, good shot. or good." And that, and that guy kind of brings you along yeah. too. So I, I think there's something to be said about leading a team from that position, yeah. being able to not be charismatic, but being real with the guy yeah. to say, this is what I expect out of you. I need you to go a little bit, you know, I need you to stem that a little higher and take it another two yards, give me some time or, or break it off because, you know, I don't have that yeah. time. Or do, doing some things individually that catches your teammates' attention to make sure you're all, you know, trying to go in that same yeah. direction. The last uh, AFC Championship game, 1992. Two, so yeah, we were Yeah, which high. was the last time Leon was right about anything. So, yeah, well, you know, computer, there's a, there's a, there's computer a was right. There's a coincidence. Oh, oh, Jeff got that. Oh, Jeff got yeah, yeah. That. Let's not give credit where credit's not due. Hey, hey AJ, let, let me ask you this. Uh, for you, going to the Senior Bowl, having you played in the, in, the, uh, in the SEC, and a lot of SEC guys, and I know my year, a lot of SEC guys in that game, and there are always a lot of SEC guys in that game. But how much, how much did you kind of go in and look at guys that you'd heard or that guy played at USC or I heard about this guy and that guy? How much little? How much did you kind of eyeball guys like that and just kind of no, kind of get to I mean, see? Hey, what, what's this guy all yeah. about? No, I mean it was a lot. I mean basically, you know, you looked at the guys that came out uh, that were on the roster that had you know all American yep. credentials. Yep. You know, guys that were like you know uh, you know MV uh, defensive player of yeah. the, of the conference, conference things like that. Right. Yeah, so, I, I so played you, with you, a guy named Dennis Lick out of Washington or out of Wisconsin. I think he won the. Uh, Outland Trophy. Outland trophy right. So you're looking at, oh, geez, here's an offensive, you know, offensive tackle won the Outland Trophy. This guy must be a beast, you know. But then again, you know, back in our day, boy, I'll be honest with you, I think those trophies stayed within the power yeah, five. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. yeah. And, yes. And you know, it, yeah. and it always went to a guy. That well, the guy came, stunk. I played against him, and he wasn't very good. Right. It's true. You know? I mean, you know, like I, I remember there was a guy that uh, uh, my senior year we were playing Nebraska. They came in. Remington. No. Uh, no, Remington is a lot younger than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, he was Come from a, where? From Nebraska. From Nebraska. Okay. He was a big, massive person, six, eight, yeah. almost three bills back yeah. in those days. And you know, I mean, he had the worst feet in the world. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. he might have been good if you got a hold yeah, of him. But right. you know, if you had, if you had any kind of skill yeah. set to kind of, you know, to understand that, don't go, don't go lock up with the yeah. guy. You know, then you know. Yeah. So that's the thing. I mean, you know, maybe the guy was good on one on one because one on one is one on one. Yeah. But you know, so, if, if you give the defensive guy. Hey, on, the, wiggle room. hey, on the other side of that, this was great yesterday at the Senior Bowl. So Mayock and Charles Davis and all going, hey, this guy, Alex Kappa, let's take a look at this lineman right. out of a Division Two or Division Three, Humboldt State, right, Division Two, right. And he's crushing. He looks like he Hogan. Humboldt State. That's he's throwing not, him. That's a Northern California. <laughs> Bo, he's throwing him over the top rope, right? He's, <laughs> he's kicking people. Right, he's right. throwing people. He's stomping people. And I go, let's go live down yeah. to the Senior Bowl practice. And, and there's a blur that that's goes by the left screen, right? <laughs> There goes, I'm not sure who's a tackle. Oh, that might have been Alex. Yeah. Alex is having a little struggle. Let's yeah. see him on the next next one-on-one. Well, that was Alex again, yeah. and he was just getting used to yeah. the speed of the game right, yeah. because he got a guy that maybe he's never seen before right. but had played at a different tempo yeah. or a different level, and he, you know, maybe today he'll be much better than he yeah. was I can't run through you, but I can definitely get around you. Yeah. 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 I remember walking out of the field for the senior bowl, and, and I saw a, a University of Miami helmet. I never, I didn't know. I didn't know who that was. I'd never right. seen the University of Miami. Because, you know, you know, back then, there was you, you watched one game on Saturdays. It was that a was game it. of the week. Notre Dame and, and you, whoever else was You got Notre on. Dame. It was either Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Ohio <clears throat> State, Nebraska. Texas, or Alabama. Yeah. And Nebraska. That was kind of the rotation right. on that game. And, and maybe whoever they played along the way, that was it. So, I'd never seen So, I said, I said to some guy, hey, wh- wh- who's, where's that guy from? He goes, that's the University of Miami. Oh, okay. I go, where's that guy? He goes, well, that's Florida State. I never even heard of Florida State, you know. <laughs> so I'm looking at all these guys, you know. So it was, it was kind of, it was, it was neat. It was interesting. It was, it was a fun, a fun exercise to go through. But, but eventually you realize that, like I said, this kid, I, this kid Dennis Lick from the other uh, one, the Outland Trophy from Wisconsin. I played against him the week before in the blue in the East West Shrine game, and I'm lining up. Did he get drafted? I got drafted in the first round, he but he did. never stuck around for very right. long. But I, I, I remember that game. I go, geez, you know what? I've got to play against the Allen Trophy. And it was in my backyard at Stanford, so I got all my family there. My buddies are there and stuff. And I go, hey, this guy's going to kick my ass here, you know. But I, and I, I do like think, four plays, I go, this guy can't even yeah, play. Right, yeah, but yeah. I, I do think, both. if you look back in, in our, our generation, I think more first round, there were more first round busts back in the day. Yeah. Now, nowadays, there's well, just they, such. There's so many eyeballs yeah, on yeah, it, right? They, it, you don't see much of that anymore. You yeah. know? And, and <clears> the good thing is, is that, you know, they've got, with the collective bargaining agreement, they've gotten all these high round draft picks, you know, to play under that, that, yeah, that rookie that, sa- right. salary cap. cap. So yeah. I, I like the way the league's, you know, taking. Uh, it's not a big as hit. Yeah, yeah, guys, the guys right. aren't holding out like you used to, like right. you held out. 
Guys aren't holding yeah, out. I had to get anymore. a couple of lunch. I had to get some more lunch money. <laughs> guys aren't holding for out. Lunch money. We were there, there's no. Them. There's no reason to hold out. You know, Joey right. Bosa really. You're, was, you're well, the last guy we left. That's well, held you're out for locked a, in. You know, yeah, you're kind of slotted in. Yeah. What so you're what's the get? point? Yeah. Right. You know, um, Periscope. Uh, hey guys, when was the last time the Dolphins were part of the Senior Bowl staff? Uh, was that Tony, Tony Sperano's staff? I believe yeah. so. Uh, yeah, I believe so. I think that it was, was Tony Sperano. Yeah. In fact, I think that's when I got sent there. The first time, uh, because that's the first time we interviewed Tony, Tony there, as was saying with Joe Philbin. I think those are the times I went to the Every to the staff you bowl. talk to, they say it's so beneficial. Yeah. I'm not so sure this year, Houston, because they lost their number one, they right. lost their number two, so they're going to be looking at the third down, round down unless the they do something yeah. as their first pick. But but look, you, you look at Denver well, and you're saying, man, that's a, that's a prime team Absolutely. right there to be coaching that. That group. That's right. You they, just they, get to be in that environment with them. That you know, the classroom environment. You know, just talking to people. Yeah. You can just you, a lot of times in conversations, you can tell. You know, to me, I'm I'm kind of an old school guy. I just want to know where your soul's at. I mean, yeah. right. like you know, just to yeah. kind of. But but you touched on something earlier, AJ, that I think is you know you you think of these guys on the field. You think of them blocking and tackling. You think of them running routes and catching the ball. You think of them you know backpedaling and, and, and covering. You think of all those things, and, and, and most people don't think about when they're in that meeting room or, or what's going on in the locker room or, or, or how does a guy handle himself in those situations. And, and you said something that, 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 you know, hey, I was never late. I always made sure I was there on time. Right. Well, that seems to be a dying, dying breed in this league anymore because being late doesn't seem to be that big a deal anymore. Whereas, you know, but if I'm a coach of one of those teams, if I'm, I'm looking at a guy, this guy's showing up late to meetings or whatever, that, that's, a, that's a black mark in my right. book, you know. I'm well, not having any of that. It comes to the point, too, Bo, where the value of being late, well, what is it going to cost me? Two, yeah. two grand? Yeah. You know, or, or, or whatever it is. Yeah. For me, but it, to me, it's, 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 it's not about the money. But that's the mindset. That's their mentality. That's the right. mentality that, right. that was never there right. before. It was more about, yeah. it didn't matter if it was $10,000. The the pride or the stigma, the stigma that you would have for being a late yeah. guy or not dependable was worse than the money. Well, well that was the old school. Yeah. So, right? so I know during our era, during our time, whether, you know, it wasn't about the whether whether you were overweight, you know, whether you, you missed weight, right? Uh, if you were late, if you're this or that, you know, and, and Coach Shula would always stand up and he would tell, hey, this guy was two pounds right. over. We find, and but it was never about the money. It was about him standing up there and pointing you out in front of your teammates. And 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 say and, and he, you know, hey oh, I guess I guess it doesn't matter if, if if it doesn't matter if everyone else is on time and you come whenever you so you know right. there was always that thought that hey you're you know you're you're, it's you're that hurting, peer pressure you're, you're of being you're, you're one of the guys yeah, you're right. hurting yeah. if you show up late you're hurting 52 other guys in there right. that are on time ready to bust their ass and ready to get the job done right and so those are the things that kind of fit but in I, on maybe that. today's teams have <laughs> such a big group of guys who have that yeah so so in our day we might have had one or two guys that kind of did their own that, thing. That he maybe. had to crack the whip after, and you know, and he yeah. pointed out, and he kind of got everybody on track. But now, when you've got a 52-man roster yeah. and, and 26 of the guys are like, ah, you know, yeah. You know. And look, and the other thing is too, Jay. These guys are all, they're all these OTA. They're they're working all. They're here all year. Yes. That's a that's a long haul for them. I'm not giving them. Look, they, uh, to me, there's no excuse for ever being late, at any time. But certainly in this environment. Uh, but anyway, that's that's neither here. To be honest there. with you, Bo, if I were a head coach in the <laughs> NFL. I might forfeit some of my OTAs, not even bring them in. Yeah, I, I don't I know. Too. I don't know how much you get out of that that, that you stuff. can't get in camp. No, I, I don't. I don't see what you need. I really, I, I really, do. I just think that yeah. the the tax on the players' bodies yeah. for 12 months is so yeah. great that they need time to just well, let me, let me get tell away. You, you know, not for nothing, but if, if if I was if I was running a team, I would push the OTAs. I, I would push all that stuff back. I give my guys. Three months, four months. Don't off. even want to see you because what what, you know, what I what I never understood was said about the programming and the way they program and stuff. AJ would be, you know, all right. You, you go through OTAs, you go through mini camps, you go through all this stuff, and then uh, a month and a half before training camp, yeah, hey, you guys are off. You know, they give them the wrong time off. Then. Yeah, yeah. I, I would rather say, look, you're going to get Pinch off it later because we're going to work right Once up. We're to, on. We're, we're going to get. You're going to get yeah. one week off before training camp. Right. That's it. Because I want you to be in top condition, right. not you know have have gotten in all, you get in top condition by May, and then get out, and of it. then you get out of it and stay mentally crisp. Yes, right. exactly. Right. And, and get, get, let their minds rest when the season's over, and then they burn out, they yeah. exhausted. You know, yeah. bring them back in May. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, Trey six thirty six from Periscope. You think the Dolphins would benefit from moving up for Raquan Smith or, or Quentin Nelson? Raquan Smith is the linebacker from 
uh, from Georgia, right? He's pretty good. I tell good. you what, ooh, that guy's that that kid's good, He's man. He's pretty good. But we got the the kid who got hurt on the f- Raquan uh, uh, McMillan. Oh, McMillan. Oh, man, yeah, yeah. I was looking forward uh, I to seeing it. So was I. My heart yeah. was broken. I, you know, when that happened, I yep. just I just I was I was watching the game. I was talking. Yep. You know, my, Francis, my wife. I said, babe. We may be snake bit this season. Yeah. You know, for something to happen that quick, yeah. sure no, enough, I'm you know. with you. I you, look, you, for, you lose, you lose Tannehill. You lose Ted Larson right off the right. bat, and then your first preseason game, you lose, you lose your uh, one of the best uh, outside linebacker. linebackers I saw all year was from Virginia Tech, mm-hmm. and it was uh, Tremaine Edmonds. I think it was Farrell's Farrell, son. Farrell Edmonds. That's Farrell right. Edmonds' son. This he's, kid, he got a couple, he got, he got yeah, a couple yeah, kids. Yeah. yeah, this kid was the one of the not only one yeah. of the best linebackers, one of the best players I've seen. Yeah. Man, he's going to be in addition to somebody yep. that needs a linebacker that yep. can run and cover and do yep. a little bit of rushing. I, 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 do a little is bit he of playing everything. in the senior bowl? No, he's a, he's a young, he's an under. Oh, he's okay, okay, he's a junior. Yeah, I, I was just out. I was just at the gym this morning. I ran into Higgy. You know, Higgy had like a he thirty had minute. To say. He had a thirty minute. Dive. He nephew. always has something to say. <laughs> That's his godson. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He had. A, he went out for twenty minutes. But I, I said, Higgy, I get it, man. <laughs> he runs a four five. He's about six five. He's about two fifty. Uh, he can cover, he can do this. I got it, Higgy. Let me get back to my workout here a little bit. <laughs> but Higgy's his, Higgy's his biggest. Uh, but, yeah, Farrell Edmonds' kid. He, yeah, he's, yeah, he's another player. kid from Virginia Tech. Yeah, he used to be an interesting guy. Uh, Michael Dampier from Facebook. Allen sounds highly intelligent and plays in a shotgun. Seems like a nice fit. <coughs> you got all that, all that out of one day's practice in uh, Mobile, I guess. I, I just think he's a guy that, that, that he's – he looks very similar to the path of Carson Wentz, right? I think so. Big guy, yeah. all the skills, all the physical skills, this and that. Seems like an intelligent guy, but he's got to go. He's got to, he's got to knock the box down like Carson Wentz did uh, to get in. I think to, the to biggest get to where he's at. The biggest difference is Carson Wentz played in an environment on a team yep. that was championship caliber yes. from the minute he walked on yep. campus. Yep. So the expectation was for him was it's a championship or this wasn't a successful season. Yep. Where Josh Allen, he had to be the guy to bring that team to notoriety. Mm-hmm. He had to bring that team to six wins or seven wins, yeah. which would have been a very good season, and then build on that. And hopefully his individual skills stood out enough right. that guys start getting eyeballs on him and say, this guy's an NFL quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Periscope, Miami uh, Bird 24. What picks do we have? Are we missing a fourth round? Right. So here's what we have. We have one pick in the first round, a pick in the second round, a pick in the third, two in the fourth, none in the fifth, one in the sixth, Two in the seventh. That's what our uh, that's what our, our draft order is right, right now. Right now we're at eleven, correct? Right now we're at eleven. Eleven. Yeah. We pick eleven this year. Eleventh yeah. in the first round. Well, I didn't know our season was that bad to be eleven. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking back. I, I didn't think we would have been that high on the on the draft rankings. That's where we are, AJ. The numbers don't lie, man. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> I think there were two coin tosses. I, guess. I think it was the Raiders and the Jets. Was there? There, there were. There were. I don't know if the Dolphins were involved in the coin toss and end up third in those three, but they're all with the same record. And I think it's the Jets and the Raiders won a coin toss Ahead to get to the, where they're okay. at. And I don't, but I don't know if the Dolphins were involved. Raiders are in, nine in the coin toss. And it's two for two for Lyon today. So if the Dolphins are nine, no oh, eleven. Eleven, I mean, and I said the Raiders are a couple picks before that. Yeah, that would make them in nine, right? So we could have been as 11, high as 11, nine. nine, nine? Could have been as high as nine. Wow. <laughs> you know he's quick. <laughs> Leon is quick. You, you, you want to think that he just presses uh, buttons, put a rap but on the it. cat can add too. No, no. I was giving. I was throwing the Jets and the Raiders. I give him. You gave him a, a, game, a team him, leeway. I'm not going to give him a free out. I'm not going to give him the free. I give him. A He's free waving out. a white flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after the Denver game, when we blew him out, we win the next three. We're in the playoffs now. We're the 11th pick yes. in the draft. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's a swing. That's a. That's a, big that's a bad swing. Yeah. yeah. That's no, double yeah. bogey, double no, bogey, double yeah. bogey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly it. That's exactly what it went. All right, Jay. Man, it's a pleasure having you, Great my man. Seeing you, buddy. I'm good. You know, I like I like your programming, but I'm glad I came you back. Gotta, you're gonna have to come back a little bit more the off season, kind of join us yeah. in here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I will. Man. You know, just you know, shoot me a text, call me one or the other. Deal. I'll try and have a little more information, be a little more. More uh, no, information. I just right. so good. Good. Storytelling is always good, you know. But with the Senior Bowl playing in it, I just thought, you know, just the thought of playing in the game, in a game like that, with a coaching staff that end up drafting you, um, you know, I, I know, I know. Over the years, listen to Coach Shula and, and listen to the to the other coaches said, that, you know, it's a reason. One of the reasons that you and, and Baumhauer ended up here because what they saw in the in the Senior Bowl, and, and it's a it's a that's a huge advantage for that team that gets the opportunity to go in, like you said, Texans. No, no big advantage to them. Right. Well, you know, it's, 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 it kind of like helped because, you know, Bob and I came in and he slotted us, you know, yeah. on the first. Right. You know, it, it almost like during that week and during the draft and everything, 
the, the, the plan was in place. Yeah. So it's, it's it, we benefited from yeah, it tremendously. No, no yeah. doubt. Uh, the other thing I remember, I, I remember, and I, I've told you this probably a thousand times, AJ. Uh, I, I remember going to the Senior Bowl, and there was a kid there from Auburn, Rick Telliard. Was he Auburn? You remember that name? Yeah, yeah. Rick Telliard. He's a nose tackle. Right. And the guy was about five foot ten, and it probably weighed about you know two seventy. And I'm going, what? That's just a little box. He's a little square box. <laughs> but I guess he was a fa- he was like an SEC favorite, right? Right, right. He didn't. He never went anywhere. He never. I don't think I got drafted or anything, but no. I, I always remember that name, Rick Tillyard. Because I walk in, everyone's talking about this guy, Rick Tillyard. And I go, where did I'm looking, where is he? Go, He's oh, down oh, there. He is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You're not going to see any more of those guys in the SEC, though. No, 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 no. not anymore, man. No, no, no way. Unless you go to Vanderbilt or go to. No, who? no. Yeah, everyone's got the They're big They're pretty bodies. big. Yeah. It was impre- I did two uh, He's playing at Hobart. Vanderbilt yeah. games this year. Yeah. And and those guys look like any other school I went to. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. It's big time, man. Big time. Hi, Jay. Thanks for coming. All right. John Thanks, Jay. Always Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jim Bocamp. We'll be back on Friday. Not sure what time, but we'll let you know. Uh, until then, have a good couple of days. Probably 12, 1, somewhere around there. I was, I was 120. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> 12 o'clock, 1, 120, whatever. We'll be back on Friday. Have a good couple of days. We'll talk to you then.